Hello YouTubers, Darkstar back with the Metagrid show. So today I've um, rigged up a, an interesting little system that I wanted to share with everyone. Uh, and I'll show you how I put it together and how it works and what it does. So um, basically we've just installed this system over the past six months. Um, this is uh, the A-frame with my uh, 47 kilowatt hour BYD based battery system configured for 48 volts. Um, I've got an outback charge controller. Oh, about 3000 watts of panels hooked into that. I mean, a midnight classic charge controller, excuse me. And uh, I've got an outback uh, inverter. So um, what we needed to do, I've got an older system that has a lead acid based battery system. It's got a bunch of rolls uh, batteries in it. I've configured for 24 volt that we've been using for many years. Uh, charged ex almost exclusively by hydroelectricity that we produce here. And uh, so what I needed to do is um, move some of the power from this new solar pack based system to the older uh, lead acid based system while I eliminate that system. I'm in the process of eliminating that system, but that involves running some fairly high gauge wire underground and uh, whatnot to to serve all of our needs here on the on the Metagrid. So um, in the meantime, what I need to do is uh, take some of the power and supplement the hydroelectric generated power on that older system with the new solar generated power here, uh, because of course it's summer and in the summer the creek falls down to almost nothing and we have very little hydroelectric output. So what I did is I uh, I found this little uh, AC relay here that I have in my AC electrical box. And uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that a bit. So anyway, it's a 25 amp solid state relay. It's controlled by a anywhere from 3 to 32 volt DC signal input. So the signal input leads are on the bottom there. You just hook up a, a, a signaling system that can tell it to turn on and off depending upon whether or not there's DC current applied to those ter two lower terminals. So then on the uh, upper terminals there, I just have the uh, hot lead coming in from a breaker and then the hot lead going out to our uh, other configured lead acid based hydroelectrically generated system. And the uh, the relay is controlled by a uh, relay logic in my outback inverter. So I have it configured that as long as the battery, the uh, LifePo 4 battery is above 50 volts, then it'll keep that relay open. So what it does is it just sends a, a DC signal, a 12 volt DC signal to the relay to tell it to stay open until the uh, BYD LifePo 4 battery falls below 50 volts and then it closes it because we don't want to drain the batteries, obviously. So uh, funny story about the Outback inverter. Okay, I've got to tell a funny story now about a uh, an Outback inverter versus a mudslide. Um, 10 or 12 years ago, I don't remember the exact date, but we uh, got about two feet of snow in the span of maybe 24 hours. And of course there was quite a bit more up on the mountain there. And... Uh, then the weather started warming. It got up to mm, 45 maybe, and it started pouring rain. Did that for, oh, 36 hours or so. And uh, our creek started swelling and swelling and getting larger and larger and overflowing its banks. And I was really impressed with the amount of water that was coming down the creek bed. So, I walked down this road here to just check it out. At the time we had a creek crossing here with a couple of culverts in the creek and a little uh, bridge across those culverts made out of uh, gravel. And uh, so I came down just to see uh, 
the status of the, the creek crossing here. And uh, the creek crossing used to be right here on the other side of those bushes. The road used to go right across here. But anyway, at the time, uh, the creek was going over the creek crossing. It was just, uh, there was probably eight to 10 inches of water going right over the creek crossing. Uh, the creek was probably, I don't know, 20 feet wide and a raging torrent. So I was standing here just marveling at the amount of water that was coming down and I heard upstream some trees cracking and usually around here when you hear wood cracking given the amount of trees we have uh you look up <laughs> because that usually means something could be coming towards your head like a branch or a tree or something of that nature so in my case i was standing right about here and in the process of looking up i saw upstream there were some fairly large trees i don't know there were 30, 40 years old, uh, mostly alders and a few hemlocks and firs. But I saw the alders falling down, cracking, one after the other. Oh, probably four or five hundred feet upstream there. All the trees were just coming down, bam, 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 crack, 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 got louder and louder. And I was going, what in the hell? And then I saw this huge wall of water coming straight towards me down the creek bed and big logs on the crest of it and just this torrent of mud. So the only thing I could do is just head straight uphill as fast as I could, booked it. Oh man, I thought for sure I was a goner. I just went ran as fast as I could right up that hill. And then I turned around when I was on the crest of the hill there and I saw this huge, huge wall of water just go right down the creek bed, wiping out everything, all of the uh, trees and rocks and stumps and dead logs. And uh, it was probably, I don't know, 75, 50 to 75 feet wide and deeper than my head at this point and uh, that went on for about two hours just this huge torrent of muddy gross water and logs and trees and everything you could imagine washing down the stream and I was really concerned about a hydroelectric shed that I had just finished uh, it's about down it was about downstream from here maybe 300 yards and um but I couldn't get across to check it out. I couldn't get near the creek for fear of being inundated and washed away. Um, so after about two or three days, the, gra uh, the water slowly receded, the rain stopped, most of the snow melted. I was finally able to, to get across the creek um, and I discovered that our hydroelectric shed had been completely washed away. I had to three inverters in there and uh, there was a hydroelectric generator just outside of the shed that you know was producing probably 1200 watts of power at the time but it was gone completely gone the whole creek bed was completely washed clean there was nothing left it was denuded down to mud and rock probably a hundred foot wide swath um, luckily this nice cedar here survived but uh Everything else, boy, just wiped out. So anyway, uh, I mean, I had several thousand dollars in equipment just washed away with the, with the hydro shed there, and I went downstream looking for it. We just started hiking down the stream and looking and searching everywhere, and probably a mile down the stream, I, I found my outback inverter sitting in the mud. And I thought, oh man, I mean, the front faceplate was completely ripped off and, uh, you know, the display and the fan shroud and everything. But, I mean, it still looked reasonably intact. So I took it home and uh, took the screws out and opened it up and there was no water inside. Uh, and uh, I thought, well, hell, is there any chance this thing still works? And uh, so I put it back together and I hooked it up as best as I could. I had to kind of jury rig some of the um terminals but uh 
I got it put back together and I got it hooked up and sure enough, it still worked. I had a, a mate, you know, external control panel that I hooked up to it because uh, all the buttons and display and everything is gone. But yeah, it works and it still works to this day. I've been using it for 10 or 12 years since then and it works fine. So anyway, yeah, that's my story and uh, back to the show. Okay, so here we are at the uh, lead acid based system that uh, has been around for probably 15 years. And uh, what I have here is an automatic transfer switch that I purchased off of Amazon through Will's um, recommended equipment page on his uh, mobile solar power website. And um, so what I have then is a uh, 10 gauge UF feeder, AWG10. It runs from the, the system that I just showed you, the A-frame system where the uh, LiFePo 4 batteries are to here. It's about 200 feet. <clears throat> and uh, so it just plugs into this unit. And I have this set up as a basic charge controller. So uh, this is a 24 volt nominal based battery system. And so when the battery voltages on this one fall below 24.9, this switch is configured to turn on. Basically, it's normally used to uh, switch between grid power and a, uh, an off-grid battery-based system. But basically, I just leave the inverter slot off. I have the input here, actually the input here to the public power input, and that co actually comes from the A-frame inverter, the outback inverter there in the A-frame. And then the output, of course, goes to a 24 volt AC, 24 volt uh, battery charger that uh, runs off of AC. So when the battery voltage falls to 24.9, this kicks input away from what would normally be the empty inverter slot to the public power slot, thereby turning on the 24 volt AC based battery charger and charging this system. We have about, oh, 800 watt charger currently. And uh, so it shunts 800 watts with, you know, some line losses and conversion losses, but still uh, we have plenty of power there at the A-frame LifePo 4 based system. And so it just shunts it over to here and we use it for all of our needs until I can get rid of this rat's nest system and uh, just I'm, I've got a large aluminum direct berry cable running from the A-frame to here and I just need to hook that up and then we'll eliminate this entire system the 24 volt inverter and all the batteries under here and all the controllers and all the wiring will be gone as soon as I get the time to uh, hook up uh, direct output from the A-frame AC to here and I hope to actually have DC to here too because a lot of the loads from this system are DC powered especially lighting and that sort of thing also some of the refrigeration is 24 volt DC based so anyway that's a project for the near future and uh, I have a little uh, cloud cam on there so I can monitor the voltage and the activity I don't know if you can see it but right now there's a little flashing arrow that indicates that the the uh, inverter output is being used which means that it's empty so there's nothing happening because there's no need for power right now but once that falls to 24.9 volts then it'll switch over to input from the a-frame and turn on the battery charger and charge the batteries so that's pretty much it dark star with the metagrid show signing off